Hey folks, welcome back to Road Hard Restorations. In this video, we're gonna be setting the timing on the 67 Ford Mustang with a 289. Now the process that I go through here in this video will apply to pretty much any engine with a distributor. This car had a really bad bog off the line. Um, the thing would cough, sputter, sometimes backfire out of the carburetor or just completely stall out. And as you saw in that last video clip, it stalled at the starting line, the drag strip, at the duct tape drags 2023. So I did like most guys do and throw accelerator pump, discharge nozzle at it. Um, and that didn't seem to help. In fact, it might've even made it worse. So no matter how much you fiddle with the carburetor before you do anything with it, make sure the engine is timed where it wants to be at, where it's happiest, where it makes the most power, most responsive. So let's go ahead and uh, just jump right into it. I'm gonna take some notes of where we're at beforehand and then uh, where we end up and that we can kind of keep track of what we're working on and what we got to do here. First thing we're gonna do is establish a baseline. So we wanted to do this with the vacuum advance disconnected and plugged off. So we're going to check the timing and the RPM at idle. We're gonna check what RPM the timing starts to advance. We're gonna see how far in degrees of advance the mechanical advance takes it. And then what RPM does the mechanical advance top out at? From there, we will know what our distributor curve is. So we also want to establish what the optimal base timing is. I want to set it as advanced as I can without the starter kicking back. So we'll do that check as well. So let's start out by checking the base timing first. Uh, let's see where we're at for timing. Bring this all the way down. And you probably can't see the light. It's probably not uh, going to show up for you, but uh, we are right at uh, four degrees base timing. At, uh, almost 600 RPM. So let's see at what point timing starts advancing. You probably won't see it, but I'll tell you. Okay, it looks like it starts advancing right at 1200 RPM. And we want to see how far it goes. Looks like uh, 27 degrees total at 3,500 RPM. So that'll give us the information we need. Probably want the timing up a little higher than that. Um, I guess by a small part of 30. So we can probably get that uh, swing to come in a little sooner, set the base timing a little later, and then we'll hook up the back advance and go from there. So let's go ahead and get this distributor yanked out. First, we want to make sure that we have it on TDC so that way we can know exactly where the distributor goes. However, I can simply clock it in the same position that we pull it out, and then as long as we don't bump the motor and put it back in the right spot, we should be in the neighborhood. So different uh, distributors will have different systems uh, of mechanical advance. Um, most of them, I think all of them are use uh, swinging weights and springs. So it's just, they're just set up a little differently. This one here has a 10 and a 15. Now that's going to be degrees of rotation uh, for the uh, distributor. And so basically you double that for the crankshaft. This basically will give you 20 and this one will give you 30. The one in the distributor, I can kind of peek down in the hole. This one's a 13 and turn it around an 18. But uh, according to this, it should be 26 degrees because uh, it's 13 times 2, or it would be the yeah, our 18, which would be, what, 36? So that's a lot. It is actually on the smaller one, so that's good. So if I could use this one, I can't because this is out of a Duras bark, so it's got a reluctor wheel on here. Um, so I can't use this to use the 10 to give us 20. Um, what guys can do, though, is you can actually weld up the slot and then just cut it as wide as you need so it only moves a little bit. I do, however, have this extra distributor, the Randy Reman, a 10 on there, so that's good, and or a 15, so a 10 or 15. So I want to use the 10 side, and this one actually is already on the 10, but I still want to change out the springs. So these usually have two springs, there's a heavy spring and a light spring, um, so I'm going to use um, the light spring out of here, take the heavy spring out, I also have 
the light spring off of the uh, DuraSpark distributor. And then I also have the spring kit from the uh, MSD um, recurve kit. So if one of these springs is going to be softer and it'll actually fit, then great, I can use one of these. And that way I'll have two light springs. The advance will come in a lot sooner. Let's go ahead and get started taking this thing apart. Just like so. There we go. See, there's those two springs. There's a light spring and a heavy spring. This thing is kind of loose, so it doesn't have a, the preload on it. This one's got a little bit of preload. The weights fly out and advance the rotor. All right, so I'm going to want to clean this up a little bit. Make sure these are going to swing you nice and freely and not be all gummed up. Let's go ahead and take the new one apart. I'm going to continue using this one in here because it's original to the car. But I need to get this guy off of there. So, all right, this one's got the 10L. The 15 spins freely on there. And we have it on the 10. Now, if that little, that little rubber bumper stop thing there is not there, you want to make sure it's there. If it's not, that's going to essentially give you more, more timing. Okay, so now we need to select our springs. There's one light spring. Here's the other light spring out of these two distributors. Now you can actually buy a recurve kit for these distributors, but literally all it is is a set of two springs. All right, so these two are my two lightest springs, so I'm going to go ahead and use these. All right, we're in the business there. Let's go get this thing back in the car. Got the distributor back in here. I'll fire it up. We'll set the base timing. Uh, it was four before. Uh, I'm going to bump it up a little bit and then see how far the swing is and go from there. All right, I am at 10 now. Okay, that's 24 degrees advance. So we had initial four. Now we go with 10 initial. 34 total now, which is a difference of what, 24. Let's kick this back up to 15. Okay, so we're at 15 now. So if I bump this up 24 more times, that'd be 39. Holy cow! I don't think it should be that high. It's down back down to 600 here. So let's see. Okay, I'm actually at 38. So that's 23 degrees of advance. So there I am, right there. Let's back it off for to 11. Okay. So let's start with the 11 initial. Now, if my math is right, if this distributor is working properly, I should be able to go up 23 degrees. to 34. That should be right there. All right, it went to 34. So there's cons there is some consistency. If I'm at 10, add 23 degrees. Bring it to 33. All right, we're there. So the initial timing used to be 4, now it's 10. I still think you could probably use a little bit more uh, initial timing, but it's going to push the total timing out further until we limit that uh, amount of advance by welding up some of that uh, gap in that uh, distributor. All in used to be at 3500 is when it would stop advancing. Now it's at 2500. So I think that's going to drastically improve uh, the performance. It was total all in uh, 27 before, now it's 33. So the difference here is 23 degree swing, even though the plate is supposed to only be 20, but it's actually doing 23. And I tested that at a wide range of initial timing setting. Tried it at 10, 11, 15. Uh, it was the same swing regardless of which where I set it. So I know it's consistent, at least in that respect, and repeatable. I have that other 
stock plate that I pulled out of the, the old distributor or out of this distributor originally. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld that up and uh, so I have a little bit less um, of a swing and keep my total and then set my uh, my initial like maybe to 15 and then get it to go to 30 so I like a 15 degree swing instead of a 23 degree swing. So we're shooting for a target of around 15 initial degrees. So I'm going to set it at 15 and then start it up and uh, see how it sounds, see if we can get back to start or anything like that. Every time you uh, advance the distributor, you got to keep the RPMs up. So then you got to adjust your carburetor to uh, lower the RPM back. For the test, is to uh, fire it up um, with it more advanced than the initial. See if that starter can kick back or not. That can go too far advanced. Once you notice that it's kicking back, you can back it off a couple of days. Alright, we're at 15. I'm going to uh, turn it off, start it up again, see how it sounds, and then I'm going to bump it up to 18. Uh, shut it off, start it up, see how it sounds. modifying the one that came out of here you can see how much play is there for the 26 this is the 20 degrees which is what this is set at so this is the 26 that was originally in the car and then this is where I'm at now obviously I need to open this up some more I need to get online get the measurement and that way I can uh, open that up so I basically just welded this up and I'm going through here and file it down uh, to the size I need. This particular is uh, 0.3375. And that should give it a total of 15 degrees of timing. So I'm going to put this in the car tomorrow, see how it works. Comparison, here's the 10 and 13. And then we take the 10 to the now the 7.5. I'll turn it around this way so you can see. This would effectively be like a seven and a half, which would be about 15 degrees. We'll bring the base timing up at least another five degrees because we're at 10 right now. That'll bring us to 15. And then um, that'll get our total timing in right around between 30 and 33, somewhere in there. All right, now we're at 15 degrees, base timing. Here is the total of 30. Right on the money. Base timing at 15, all in at 30 at 2,000 RPM. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump it up to 18. That's where we wanted it. And then uh, just give us the additional three at the top for 33. Okay, got it locked out at 18. Running about 730 RPM. Set the timing line to 33. Bring it up. Once it uh, stops the dancing, I'll record that number as far as our is. We are right on the mic. All in at 33 degrees. Uh, advance. 2,000 RPM. Even the carburetor doesn't seem to have that stumble off of we're not in load right now. A lot of times when I snap a throttle like that, it would pop and sputter and sometimes it pop out of the front, but back right out of the front. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the back of the pants again and uh, see what that gives us in our It doesn't quite fire off like fuel injection. I have to give it one pump. Back and looked up, I'm at 41 degrees in advance at idle. Oh, yeah. Alright, so 
So I definitely need an adjustable vacuum canister of some sort. Um, I could take this one off, kind of see if I can adjust it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this vacuum advance. Uh, the newer ones are uh, adjustable by just putting a hex key in the end of it and making a few turns. This one, you gotta take it apart and put uh, spacers in there or washers or a different spring or what have you to limit the travel and how much um, vacuum force it needs to actually actuate it. This is actually not the one off the car, but I have all the guts off the one on the car. You can actually do this on the car without taking it off. So we had added some washers. I'm gonna add some more. I think it's just these, uh, these three here. I'm gonna use this one as a guide. I'm gonna put it together and see how far the yarn travels. Once I have that figure, I can add washers to see how far it travels. I'm gonna to try to cut it in half. See the mark that I made on the pencil that tells us where it's at. I wish this diaphragm worked because then I could really do this correctly. So it's gonna be hard to hold this down. All right, now I got a mark here and a mark here. I'll measure this real quick. Okay, so this looks like this moved 830 seconds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some spacers in here, more washers. Look okay, at how this goes is cap comes off. You got a little gasket there. And then inside you have several washers, a little stack of washers. Then you have the spring. Then you have this little guy right here. Put this guy back in there, put that on there. These two washers here, gasket over the top. See how far it'll compress. <laughs> That's it. That was at 8.30 seconds before. Now I'm at 4.30 seconds. So it's only gonna compress half as much. So I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and take this part here and put this whole stack in the distributor. And then we'll hook up the timing light and try it again. All right, I think I got my numbers here. My base timing. 30. All right, just got back from a test drive. Car runs way better. Uh, it's up on power. It's spunky. It'll actually fry the tire if I want it to. Um, it's not going to win any races. You know, it's just a little 289, but uh, um, it's definitely a lot peppier than it was. Um, it wouldn't get out of its own way before. Uh, so having the timing where it needs to be uh, made all the difference in the world. Uh, before, when it would bog, it would cough and sputter and sometimes die, backfire out the carburetor, the whole nine yards. So uh, it doesn't do that anymore. It still has a bog, but it recovers really quickly. So we're actually really close um, with the carburetor. So now it's just a matter of tuning the carburetor to the engine now that the engine is where it needs to be as far as timing goes. So that should be pretty straightforward. If you haven't already, go check out Tall John's Fun Shop YouTube channel. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's got a lot of videos on there to show you how to set your timing on your engine and why you're setting it where you are. Um, so go check out his videos. I'll put a link down in the description below. And uh, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.